Welcome everybody. Today we have in the house Robin Von Sendik. He is an author, he is a brain health trainer, and he's also a neuroencoding coding specialist. Welcome Robin. Thank you for being Woo-hoo. here. <laughs> thank you, so, thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Please share with us what inspire you to become a author, to become a brain health trainer and a neuroencoding specialist. Yeah, that's really interesting. And um, author is the book I'm writing. I already wanted to write it for like more than 10 years, but then I always had an excuse. Oh no, first I need to become a captain. Uh, I'm a pilot also. So I first I need to become a captain. Then first I need to uh, um, go backpacking in the jungle of Thailand. Then, no, 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 first I need to, I had a lot of excuses why not to do it. Uh, The backpacking also, I did uh, Santiago de Compostela in Spain, and I did a lot of things. And then um, when my last job as a pilot was in Kazakhstan, in uh, Almaty, two years ago, and then uh, me and my girlfriend from Venezuela, we were there, and then COVID hit, boom. And we were stuck for four months there because I could come to Europe as a European citizen, but she couldn't. So, yeah, I can't leave her there. So, and uh, then my my coach, because I've been always interested in coaching. I did uh, coaching training institute uh, course when I was in Dubai. That's about fifteen years ago, and I had a trainer there. May Vu, who is a female, she's Vietnamese American. She is a leadership coach, a sex therapist, and a uh, yeah, and a coach. She written a book, and then she said, "Robin, you don't have an excuse anymore because all the excuses you had, you did it. Now COVID told you to write your freaking book, and that's when we got connected again. And that's since a year and a half." We've been writing the book, but it's only going to be about 160 pages, but it takes, it took so long because for me, it was also therapy, therapy about everything that passed in my, happened in my life. And, um, well, the title, I don't know if I should mention it here or not, but (laughs) I did a lot of stupid things. Let's, Let's say it like that. I was searching in the wrong places, but maybe on purpose. So yeah, to answer your question, what motivated me to write is because what I did, I see a lot of men also doing it. And I realize now how big the ego of men is. They don't sometimes even want help. You go, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. What are you talking? You're, you, you want to talk about your feelings. You're, you're a sissy, you know, but no, that's not. That's the machismo. You know, the machos. They built a brick wall around their feelings. Or a real man doesn't talk about his feelings. B.S. A real man is not scared to talk about his feelings. Anyway, that's what my book is about. Did I answer your question? I know I've talked a lot. Yes, yes, you did. I mean, this is very interesting. Yeah, you're sharing like what what your book is going to be about. So that's very interesting. So you're you're targeting man that think you know that think that being uh, tough as and I'm not sharing my feelings and I'm not telling you what I'm going through. It's not the real thing. Yeah, and I always have a saying, and especially for a lot of men, and it's a bit of a wordplay, denial is not only a river in Egypt. So denial and denial, I mean, a lot of, there, there are a lot of guys are in denial. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And meanwhile, they're hurting inside. And it has to come out somewhere. And then, I mean, I have a few friends like that who are like, oh, they were the tough guy. And um, yeah, it's rough but two of them um died last year from cancer oh i'm sorry my age 50 and that's what i say if it doesn't come out one way it goes it comes out the other way 
as a sickness or something. So that's why I'm always, you better express your feelings and stay healthy. That's my motto. So do you, do you believe that in society, we stereotype man to be tough all the time? Do you think it's a part of society that we assume, you know, that you have to be tough? Uh, yes, I think we do. And maybe that's from the um, older ages. I mean, what, what did they say? The, the, the typical cliche, uh, women are gatherers and men are hunters. Mm-hmm. And in the old days, what was it? Uh, when men, when humans lived in uh, uh, groups of 100, 150, Um, I also think that's why um, fear of rejection is the biggest fear. Because in those days, when you were rejected as a man by a woman, you would be rejected by everyone. And then you would be ejected out of the group. And that's it. You're going to die, basically. That's very, very basic uh what i found in research and obviously i'm not a specialist and i'm not a psychologist and everything but i experienced it like that also um i have a lot of um one chapter in my book is about uh, it's about pickup artists and i have a friend of mine who has a company in that um what's a pickup artist the movie um hitch Uh, he helps guys approach women basically but it's more getting over the fear of rejection and i'm writing about that also it's about a lot of men are it's it's really funny how a lot of men are they're very powerful but basically they're scared of women they sometimes they don't even want to ask directions yeah so i can i can talk about this for hours and hours i'll figure it out this (laughs) That's a phrase that comes to my mind. I'll figure it out. <laughs> We're not going to ask for directions. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll figure it out. You don't ask for directions. Why? Your ego? Yes. You know, I'm not like that. So I'm like freaking, I'm going to ask for directions. Time is money. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, that's a yeah. good way to see in that. But that's and- also ego again. Ego. No, no, no. Oh, oh. yeah. No. Okay. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. How you're you're uh, you know expressing your knowledge you know and passing it down to future generations i have two sons so i feel like i'm responsible to guide them in a way that i don't want them to lose their you know their authenticity but at the same time it's like yeah you're responsible once you know you decide to get married and have a family you yeah. know, it's like all of these questions come to my mind. Is like, how can I guide them better in a way that they're themselves, you know, and they don't have to step on their authenticity. Can I t- two things? You you're really on the on the point there, and I wanted to say two things about that. Um, first of all, what you said, guide them, and that's amazing. Um, one of our the guys in our group, David. Um, I'm teaming up with him on things because he there is one thing with men that in the ancient times again uh, men when a boy comes of age 13 14 15 years like I flew a lot to Africa and the Maasai have a rite of passage into masculinity and that's been done by the elder men they guide and in the ancient times he had to kill a lion with a spear uh that's forbidden now because of protection of the lions but they still circumcise and he still he needs to get into a some a, some a thing with ants and he gets bitten with ants because he needs to be strong and suffer of um, conquer the pain and there's quite some uh, uh, uh tribes still who have the rite of passage like and even um, uh, the Jews have it. It's called Bismarck. Anyway, they guide a boy into, ma- into masculinity. And 
but in a lot of i'm not saying all in a lot of western society it doesn't happen anymore and since the industrial revolution about 150 years ago men went out to work so the father figure was not home anymore and the mother does the work and she does her best but some things a woman can't do you know even though she with her best intentions some things in this process have to be done by elder men and that's what's missing in society these days and that's why i see because i was one of them my father was working all the time and my mother was working all the time i had to figure it out myself what's masculinity i know i was like curious and i went for it i failed a lot of times that's what my large part of my book is about but a lot of men are lost in 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 this and that's what i spoke about with david on um that we need to do this somehow get a certain yeah a rite of passage they have i mean you have uh fraternities and you have uh the military but that's not the right way because like the the the, the officer who screams at you in the military he doesn't have your soul at heart the soul of the young boy are you still following me because yes i'm, I'm loving it yes of course how, yeah i'm like i'm thinking of my boy because i'm know, like, like yeah and, no, because, I'm... and the elder men in the tribes they have the soul of the boy at at their heart to really get them into uh masculinity Funny thing is, a very good friend of mine, she um, did her master's in, in this, in, but she focused on um, the Maasai. In Af and she is actually setting up a camp in uh, Kenya. And she offered that I speak to some tribes, of, of the tribe leader, and they're going to tell me, and that's going to be a podcast in the future, not now, but about, and they're going to tell me about their rite of passage for boys into manhood so basically what i think is what's missing these days is that um a lot of men in the western world and i'm saying all i'm not generalizing but they miss this rite of passage i had it what, what I, I am i a man now or what but what should i do and uh, i don't know and my mom guided me but some things my mom couldn't do because she's a woman she doesn't with all the respect she did her best but yeah and um i think that's what's missing yeah. in society in western society these days a lot Thank and that's you. why a lot of men are lost and that's going to be my message uh, those guys i want to help because and a lot of them have big ego and they're like oh no 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 i don't have a problem mm. yeah you do <laughs> yeah because so. the, there is not an ideal figure you no, know, of, we're of, all unique. Yes, and they there is not a point, and like a woman knows whenever she becomes a woman. Yeah, but, but, a, a, but a boy doesn't like unless you know, exactly. like uh, unless you're talking, you know, you were sharing that tradition in Africa. You know, there is a no, a, a old man that guides them through. Yeah, the I mean, process. the Aboriginals have it in uh, still if, if they. I mean, they're almost ruined also with the aboriginals in, in australia and i think the uh in in the native americans i think they also have a i'm not sure they also have a process i think so yeah but yeah it is it is an issue it's a it's a dormant problem if that is the i don't know if that's the right word but it's something big but we're all in denial yeah and that's why i'm glad Thank you for bringing it in, bringing it up. You know, like that's 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 good. You know, it, it's going to be so so beneficial for boys. You know, to to be guided. You know, like if they feel that they need to go through the process, or if they feel like they need to hear that message, then you know it's there. So that's amazing. You're a blessing. I think I think that's it's it's the <clears throat> sorry, it's the basis for what they call you. Yeah it's uh they call it toxic uh, masculinity <clears throat> uh 
toxic masculinity is the machismo, the, 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 the wife beater, the, 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 because a man at some point is frustrated and it needs to go out somehow. And then maybe he, you have guys that start fighting and start beating their wife or something, you know, because, and because they're frustrated, they don't know how to deal with that emotion. Why? Because they're not guided into handling their male emotion, their male feelings. Because we're human. We have feelings. And if you don't know how, you don't know what to do, you feel frustrated, you don't know how to express it, you start fighting or you start doing crazy things. Drugs, you go to whatever, prostitutes, I don't know. You do crazy things just to think you figure it out, but you don't. So, yeah. Wow. Can't wait to, you know, to uh, buy your book and, and read all this nice information that you're, you're sharing with the world. That's good. I'm a bit, a, a year ago, I was like, no, I can't write about this. No, I can't write about this. No. And now I'm like, I don't care <laughs> because it's the truth. Yeah. I mean, and, it. Yeah. and it makes sense. You know, like you said, the, the revolution, industrial revolution, and then everybody went to work, mom and dad were, or yeah. some women stay home, you know, but then the male figure is so important. Yeah. And then the male figure, the, the dad comes home and then... It, it was even research. I, I, I there are, yeah, there are research now that there are here. There are programs in the state that are teaching families yeah. that, that dad has to spend time with, you know, yeah. with the child. And there is research based that there is so much benefit, you know, from yeah. the father's and quality time, time huh? because in the end, then the dad comes home after 10 hours of work, he's tired. And then the only connection he has with his son is like, clean up your room. You were rude to your mom. And that's that. And actually, I don't know. It's in, it's in, this is an amazing book, a book for men. And they, um, in there, I should have looked it up. He says, uh, basically he mentioned somewhere that, um, after the industrial revolution that a man got he got angry at his dad because he there's no male figure that guides him and then when there's a void and like joseph says with the stop technique uh, you create a, by standing up you create a void and then you can fill it with something nature wants to fill a void when the father figure is not there and the elders are not the elder men are not there nature tends nature tends to um fill it with something and he says in this case it's not with nice disney figures and uh, whatever no it's get filled with demons and you cannot deal, uh, kill demons they can only be educated because then they get angry at older men because he wants to develop as an adult as a man but there is no man to guide him and then subconsciously he gets angry and that's where all goes wrong I should have looked it up exactly where it is, but I will do that in the future. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's a big thing. <laughs> and it's part of our like history, you know, like there was a big movement and then like this industrial revolution happens and then there's yeah. a change, kind of like now with a pandemic, you know, like within a few yeah. years we're gonna see what this big change uh took place, like how it benefit humanity and how it's going to uh, hurt us yeah. in a way kind of like yeah. you were sharing um you were a pilot for how many years were you a pilot uh, 25 years why did you stop because of covid <laughs> i um i tried to stop two times already but when i was 42 i was with emirates in dubai and I actually reached the top you could reach in aviation. I was a captain of the Airbus A380, the double-decker, 500 passengers. And then I'm like, hmm, do I want to do this for another 20 years? No, because basically I already done coaching courses. I've already done, I knew coaching was. Your thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I love flying. My first word, normal, normal um, kids. I think the first word is mom. Mm -hmm. My first word was Vitae. Vitae is vliegtuig. It's a Dutch word for airplane. Oh, wow. My second word was mom. 
But my first word was the Dutch word for airplane. So I should have become, a, it was destined that I become a pilot. Um, yeah. Uh, why did I stop flying? I tried to stop flying three times. Um, I stopped with Emirates. I'm like, I reached the top, going to stop. And I had a girlfriend in Singapore, going to start a business there. That failed. Went back to Aruba, started flying again. Then I'm like, ah, no, this is not. So I went to Curacao, my birth island in the Caribbean. Started a swimming pool business. Yeah, logic, isn't it? Um, that went very well, but I couldn't handle the island mentality. So I went back to flying. In the end, I ended up in Kazakhstan with my girlfriend. Like I, yeah, we were in Kazakhstan and um, yeah, flying again, happy. And then COVID hit. We were stuck for four months and finally we got back and then I'm like, no, I think the universe is trying to tell me something. <laughs> yeah. And then you, my coach said, Robin, get your ass in here, write a book and start becoming a coach now. Now it's what more clear signals from the universe do you want? <laughs> <laughs> a universe, yes. Yes. <laughs> Your wish is my command. No, my wish is my command. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I mean, you, you're going to empower tons of, you know, male, young, you know, young they people. Need to want. They need to want, because that's what I'm bumping into now, that the male ego. Male ego. They have a very sensitive ego, like we, like we said earlier. No, 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 I don't have a problem. I'm good. I'm good. No, you're not. So that's my um, challenge now, is to get that guys would say, shit, I do have a problem. Can you help me? But you know how it is. They, they, it's, it's hard. So that's my... That's my biggest challenge now. Now, how has your life, like your 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 family life or your relationship with your girlfriend has changed based on you learning about the male ego and uh, how the industrial revolution shifted and changed, you know, lives for, for the male figure and, and their sons? It was funny that we spoke about it when we were finishing um, with May, my coach, we were finishing the last chapter two weeks ago before it went to the editor. And we were talking about the end. And then we were like thinking about how everything went and that um, I've always been a bit of a party animal. And I had a lot of women. And uh, because... I was like living the La Vida Loca, no? <laughs> and like, yeah. it was always, yeah, it was always easy to get out, you know, and then, okay, job next. But it was running away for feelings. That I realize now. Mm -hmm. It was running away for commitment, running away for, because of. Um, but being stuck in Kazakhstan, being responsible for my girlfriend, I can't run away. So, and that basically forced me to look in the mirror. What the freak do you want? <laughs> and that's when I kind of realized, damn, yeah. I'm really, really happy with this one. And obviously we had fights, usual, every relationship has it. And especially when you're stuck in, uh, in a hotel in a Russian, foreign Russian uh, country. Although the people are really, really amazingly friendly there, but still, you, you don't know what's going on, you know. Um, but it forced me. And uh, so what effect did it have? It had an effect that um, I was married before once when I was in Dubai, but that was kind of... Yeah, because in Dubai, you can't live together officially if you're not married. And basically, it was it didn't work out. We were married for one year. Um, this one now, 
I asked her to marry me. And this one is really from the heart, from the soul, because I found my soulmate. Oh. And, um, but it took a lot of beep, shit, <laughs> <laughs> to get there. And, uh, but yeah, so, and that's why now it's also um, so funny how everything, like, uh, you know, that game Tetris, that you kind of everything mm -hmm. together that um he, i had to experience all that stuff to get where i'm now and i'm writing a book about all that stuff and i'm doing the coaching with the brain with uh, neuro encoding and um, brain health at the basis because I think I have quite some things Sweet. to share yes. and to help. Um, it was just earlier. It wasn't the time yet. I still needed to. I was this kind of boy that needed to play a bit more than others. And yeah, and oh yeah, and that's the other thing I wanted to mention. We, we were talking about that earlier. Um, a lot of people, and I'm saying men and women, but now I'm focusing it on men. As a man, you need to learn to be alone, happy. Be happy alone. And when you're happy alone, then you will attract the right woman in your life or partner. A lot of people are scared to be alone. Why do I know this? I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a difference between be, uh, being alone and being lonely. I was a group friends and I was lonely. I needed to learn to be alone. And when you're alone, then you become this calm, call it the oak tree or the, I like to like the, the lake, the deep lake, profound lake with its calmness and the waves can do whatever they want. It doesn't affect you. And yeah, and a lot of people don't do that. People are scared to be alone and they get into a relationship just not to be alone. You're right, yes. That's a beautiful message. Uh, yeah. What has been, I know you share a couple of books already, but what has been one book that has added tons of value to your life that we can share our audience, Ooh, that we can share with our audience today? Um, quite a few, but I think, um, oh, basically, well, but it's a bit of a cliche, but this one is amazing. <laughs> Thinking Think rich. rich. Okay. Yeah. I have not read that one. Annette recommended that one. And that's my next purchase, I told her. But I already had a couple of books that I needed to read. But my next purchase purse is going to be that one. It's, it's a bit, it's intense. And it'll take you some time. But it's a really amazing book. Okay. Uh, the book I want to read now, I just got it in from Amazon, is this one, Marcus Aurelius, The Emperor's mm -hmm. Handbook. And that's one for men, basically about leadership. But uh, I don't have one specific book mm -hmm. that really had an effect, except for one. Yourself. Choose yourself. Self. Okay, I haven't seen that one. That's uh, I read it five times. Oh, okay. Because it it literally talks about um, it, it. It could have been part of the introduction. Is sort of the introduction in my book that he went to shit. He wanted to at some point. He said, "I'm going to commit suicide because I don't want this anymore." And blah 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 blah. But then he figured it out and. Basically, the title says it, and that's my motto now. Um, if I combine that with what me as a pilot, aviation, when you go into an airplane and they do the safety briefing with this ox with the uh, uh, life vest and everything, they said, put on your own oxygen mask before you help others. Because if you don't have oxygen, you can't help anyone else. If you're dead, you can't help anyone else. You need to help yourself first before you can help other people. And that's what this book is about. This book is my, is literally, yeah, 
the answer to your question is this one. Choose yourself. It's freaking yeah. amazing. James L. Toucher. Okay, awesome. And um, I read that book when I was advised by one friend of mine when I resigned for Emirates. He said, Robin, read that book because now you're going to choose yourself. Because I was being, I was, when I lived in Dubai, I was, in, I had everything, a lot of money. I had everything materialistic, but I wasn't happy. I lived in a golden cage, like they said. And I needed to get out of it. I was getting frustrated. I was like, yeah, I have it all, but I'm not happy. Mm. Now I have much less money. I mean, but I'm freaking happy. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so, I always good. say the, the, the cliche is money uh, doesn't make you happy is true. If you're unhappy, money cannot make you happy. However, if you figure out a way to become happy, then money can help to become a little bit more happy. A little more happy. <laughs> the chicken and the egg. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Where can we find you? Like if one of our audience says, I really like his message and I want more of it, where can they find you? I have, um, I can share it with you. It's not official yet, but I created my website, but it's still sort of under construction. So it's not really good, but it's literally my name, robinvansambic.com. Okay. That's basically my website. I haven't put it out there yet because there was still a lot of things to do, but it is published and it's there. I put one blog my first blog in there i have one the, the vlog i did last week which failed but <laughs> we're learning <laughs> exactly so yeah that's basically and yeah i'll be pimping out myself now because i want to launch my book on the 14th that's tuesday i think 14th of december just before christmas okay. so that all the women can buy this book for their man husband boyfriend whatever and um yeah basically that's it robinfansambic.com now before you leave what is i know you share tons of value tons of information with us already but what is one message that you could share with our audience to help them create a brighter future I wrote that down somewhere because I was thinking about that yesterday. But basically, it's stop the ego. Start looking in the mirror and accept uh, your vulnerability. And I'm actually talking to basically the men out there. I think I, oh, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wrote it down. Yay. <laughs> let go, let the ego go, guys. Can I say some semi bad words here? Go for it. Because that's me, I'm Dutch. <laughs> My message let the ego go, guys. We're all fucked up in some form. A lot of others are just better at hiding it. Stop hiding, and the world will be a better place. Stop. And this is from Vino, Vino, and I love that. Stop self-beating, start self-building. I oh. love, I love that 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 saying, what Vino told us. So I really, really, really love it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the value you brought today, all the information and your knowledge, your wisdom. I truly appreciate your time. And, you know, we have to uh, meet again and talk about, I'm going to read your book and I would like to interview you again yeah. uh, based on your book, if you have time. And, of course, and I like to interview you. Oh, point. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, need, I, need all, I need the female point of view in this also. Okay. To, be, to make it complete. Awesome, yeah. Well, yes, we'll, we'll do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here and listening to us. Take care and blessings to you all. Bye-bye. Thanks.